Good morning, boys and girls. Mr. S with Chapter 10 Review on Agriculture. 40 questions. Here we go. Look at the role of the difference between MDCs and LDCs when it comes to agriculture. Some of the key things of common differences of amount of crops produced per year and more importantly, the income they derive from it. Then look at the role of hunters and gatherers. We looked at that as the early developing and sort of go through this from a historical perspective and linear through the chapter. Hunting and gathering, look at some of the key things of their societies and that even still today. Um, they are found in isolated places in the world. When we start to look at domesticating uh, crops, plants, agriculture, the earliest form, we go back about 10,000 years ago, and the key place in, or hearth would be Asia. More specifically, we can see the role of seed agriculture to come from Southwest Asia. Seed agriculture, Southwest Asia. When we took, talked about different agricultural practices, look at the idea of why those things occurred in particular regions developmentally. And that would be due to cultural preferences, limited knowledge of alternatives, physical characteristics of the land, and climate. And so all those things together are what created different practices. We looked at the role of what has helped MDCs develop commercial farms in the 20th century. And the advantage they have over LDCs would be things like scientific advances, electronics, transportation improvements. So look at those kind of things. And one of the issues, too, that helps uh, in the decline of farmland, especially in MDCs, is the idea of urban sprawl. We looked at different types of farming. For example, subsistence ag agriculture. Please know what that is. Please know that um, we looked at three different types, shifting cultivation, intensive subsistence farming, and pastoral nomadism. Then we looked at uh, the idea of shifting cultivation. Where would you find it? What climate? What region? And that would be in a humid or low latitude where they tend to have high temperatures and abundant rainfall. That's why we can have the floods, the monsoons for that kind of agriculture. When we look at traditional uh, farmlands and preserving them, one of the key things that is looked at is soil quality. Uh, the largest percentage of the people in the world today farm through intensive subsistence farming. We tend to see that, and the greatest largest proportion of farmers of this practice is in Asia. Know the steps of, of growing rice, from preparing seedlings in the nursery to flooding the land to plowing the land by oxen and then planting the seedlings in the flooded land. Um, when we looked at China and the different types of crops grown, one of the key reasons, especially for land mass as large as China, is their climate. Then we looked at nomadism or pastoral nomadism. One of the key issues for them is their climate, and that's why it is done there, and they live in a dry climate. And this is normally territory or land that they occupy and own. They just move from one region to another. We talked about the term transhumans. And that's the moving of livestock from highlands to lowlands based on weather. Uh, we talked about the idea of double cropping uh, to get more yield from crops. So know what that is. Then we talked about the idea of an MDCs, commercial agriculture. One of the key and most common formed is mixed crop and livestock farming. Know what that is where we're growing both crops and uh, animals and they are helping each other and know that entire process. Uh, we looked at the idea of different seasons of crops, so know the idea, for example, of what is winter wheat and when it is harvested and when it is planted. Uh, we looked in the idea of agribusiness, which is what the United States is very, uh, a way of looking at our farming, and that's when it's integrated in the entire food production industry. That's one reason why ranching has declined in this country due to uh, crops yield more profits than the cattle 
and easier to deal with in many cases. And if you compare ranching, it's very much like pastoral nomadism. Uh, we looked at the idea of Mediterranean agriculture, so know what type of products are grown and what is least likely. Much more fruits, cereals, olives, grapes, those kind of things. Um, look at the idea of why we use crop rotation and the idea of sustainable agriculture where we use integration of crops and livestock. We don't use very many chemicals. We're sensitive to land management, um, those kind of things. Then we looked at Von Thewen's model for choosing commercial farm products. And the whole key there is market location and how far from market can I have my products so that they won't perish before I can get them to market and how easy it is to transport them to market. Uh, then finally, the last ideas is looking at some from some of the videos we looked at and as the chapter also talks about uh, differences from MDCs and LDCs, what crops they choose to grow. Uh, one of the key things is both MDC and LDC farmers do have inadequate incomes. Um, less developed countries are more encouraged to sell their export or to export their crops, I should say, especially drug crops. And that's why drug crops are grown, even though they are illegal, because MDCs will pay more for them. And one thing to stop this increasing of the food supply is if we increase tariffs on grains, that will decrease our food supply and is not a good strategy for increasing food supply. So that's just about everything. Good luck. Make good notes. You can use notes on the test. See ya.